There's nothing as nostalgic as a Star Wars action figure. Growing up, I have so many memories attached to these little plastic figures. This one, for example, and yep, it's a real 1979 carded Boba Fett, was my all-time favorite. In 1985, though, it all ended. And I don't think that any line has been able to capture the magic of Star Wars as these figures did until now. Guys, these are pretty damn awesome. The Mandalorian retro style figures today on Toy Tantrum. And I'm going to open them too. These figures are amazing. They capture the look and the style of the original line. They even stick the Kenner logo on the card. They have the vinyl cape, man. These are something else. We have Karga here. There's so many different awesome figures. This is the hard to find one of Cara Dune. Uh, we have the Ugnaught. This is an awesome little figure. This guy's wicked. And of course we have Mando himself. And everyone's favorite, they call them Baby Yoda, but his name is Grugu, and he comes with his little egg pod, and man, these are just so awesome. I thought that they were going to just repaint an IG-88, but they did a whole new mold on IG-11. What a fantastic assassin droid to have in the line. They're wicked. We're going to open them up, and we're going to take a look at them here on Toy Tantrum. All right, here we go. I'm going to randomly grab one, and we're going to start today by opening up, well, Moff Gideon. So, we got Moff Gideon. Rip him open and take a look. I know everyone's kind of screaming right now. Go, what are you doing? They're going to be worth money one day. They're not going to be worth money one day because everyone's keeping them in the pack. No! see what he looks like. Oh, he's got his little blaster. That's kind of cool. Doesn't really look like it could be a retro weapon. I mean, maybe from the Power of the Force line when the detailed weapons came into the uh, figure line. But guys, come on. Seriously. Vinyl cape, just like Vader. I almost expect to have a... That almost tricked me there. You see there's a little red line. I almost thought he would have a lightsaber, but he's not a Jedi. He wouldn't have a lightsaber. What a wicked figure. Like, unbelievable. And now, theoretically, in the, um, <clears throat> there we go. Look at that, guys. He's going to fit perfectly with the retro figures and the original figures that I have. I'm so excited to add more characters to the Star Wars universe that look like they're from the time. So there is, of course, uh, Gideon, the bad guy. He wants Grugu. We're going to put him right there. All right, randomly say stop. Stop. Everyone's favorite. We're going to open up Grugu, or otherwise known as the child, or Baby Yoda. So it looks like he comes with a few pieces. He comes with his, uh, his hibernation egg, or his egg that he sleeps in. Uh, a post to hold the egg to give it the illusion that it's floating. And it also comes with the toy and some food for him. One of the little uh, frog creatures or weird little creatures that he eats uh, in the show. So let's just crack this guy open. And with wanton abandon, we will throw away the packaging. You know, I always think that a toy is only a toy when it's able to be played with. Other than that, it's just a thing sitting in a box. All right, so pretty straightforward. Almost reminds me of the Mork from Orc egg. You know, back in the 70s, there's a Mork for Mork Egg, and uh, you'd put a figure in it, Mork, and, and he would fly around. But here's his little uh, baby Yoda uh, child egg that he goes in. Let's uh, set this up. This is probably the smallest Star Wars figure in 
history, it's tiny. It's smaller than a Jawa, and they gave you the egg to give it a little bit of value. Uh, we're gonna open it up, and we'll put Baby Yoda into his little bassinet, and we will send him off to bed. And there he is. He has this little creature here that he can munch on. And of course, he seals off like so. If there's a way to display him. Uh, it's too bad they didn't hinge this in a way that you can just kind of open it up and, and not lose this piece or have it slide open. But nonetheless, an excellent figure of the child. Precious little creature. Kuil over here is an Ugnaught that helped Mando locate the child um, and helped in the child's rescue. The Ugnaughts were of course seen in Empire Strikes Back. They were the kind of maintenance workers on Cloud City and didn't have much of a presence other than throwing around the pieces of a dismantled C-3PO. They did get an action figure in the 80s, but it was lackluster and pretty boring. But this little guy is pretty cool. In fact, the detailing on him is excellent. He has his little almost World War II style aviator helmet with glasses, a little backpack for supplies, and great detailing on the face. And he comes with a pretty cool looking, it almost looks like an Imperial blaster, but it's not a blaster for trying to take out uh, the baddies. He of course was part of the rescue of the child in the first few episodes. Really cool figure and a small figure, but it doesn't matter. They are exactly the scale and make perfect sense in this amazing line. Size matters not. Look at me. Just me by my size, do you? Hmm? Hmm. All right, we got Cara Dune here, played by actress Gina Carano. She was, of course, let go from the series for some insensitive posts that she made. Disney gave her the axe. We'll feed this figure to the Rancor later. But in the meanwhile, this is the hard one. This is the one that is a little tougher to get because, of course, she was... Doesn't even want to open. She was, uh, of course, canned from the show. But let's take a look at this figure nonetheless. She was an excellent character on the show. This figure comes with two weapons. It looks like the first weapon that I'm pulling out right here is a duplicate of the one that came with... No, it's not. This weapon right here looks like it's a blaster and she also comes with a rifle type weapon. This almost reminds me of the vintage weapons that came with the uh, the uh, snow the snow rebels. There was the the rebel commander came with a weapon similar to this, and as did the Endor rebel came with a weapon similar to this. So she's fully stocked. She looks great. She's got her tattoos on her arm. She's got her armor. The face looks uh, enough like her that you would think it was the uh, actual actress. But that was the charm of the Star Wars figures, that they didn't actually always look like the actress or the actor portraying the character. They just looked enough like them, and you left it up to the imagination. So if we fully put her together with her rifle and her weapon, she can help Mando navigate the galaxy. I'm in. This one's awesome. It's Apollo Creed. No, it's Karga, played by Carl Withers. This is a uh, figure of the individual who was in charge of giving out the bounty pucks to the different bounty hunters on who to find in the galaxy. Uh, great figure, and I love the fact that there are lots of people of color in this line, unlike the original Star Wars line where only Lando and I think an unnamed Bespin security guard were ever made. This line promises to be very representative of, uh, of people, okay? Which, of course, we all know shouldn't even have to happen, but that's the world we live in. Uh, this is a great looking figure. It reminds me almost like of, of, of a Jedi. He's almost wearing a Ben Kenobi style, you know, uh, vest underneath his vinyl cloak. And just so you guys know, this isn't the same vinyl that the original line was made with. It feels like it has much more flexibility and won't tear as easily as the ones that were made back uh, 40 years ago. He, of course, also comes with a little blaster. I think he should have come with a puck that he could have given to uh, the bounty hunters to uh, go on their missions. But nonetheless, an amazing figure of, uh, of this character. And of course, 
you know, uh, legendary actor. I think this is probably the uh, the second role that this man played to get an action figure. The first one being, of course, Apollo Creed. Love this figure. Looks like it stepped right out of the vintage line. Shades of IG-88. I remember getting this figure from Sears as a kid. Well, not this figure, but IG-88. This is pretty much an exact clone. Look at this, guys. It even comes with the two weapons that IG-88 came with, a blaster and a rifle. The figure even looks like IG-88, but he's not. He's IG-11 from the same manufacturers of the assassin droids. This guy was, of course, also trying to pick up the bounty on the child and ended up getting into a skirmish with Mando. And then, of course, they teamed up to share the bounty. Let's take a look at the weapons. And like I said, it's almost an exact duplicate of the rifle and the little Imperial Blaster. Check that out. This is exactly the weapons that would have come with a vintage ID IG-88. Beautiful figure, really nice. Uh, I love the fact that the bandolier is a separate piece that almost looks like it, uh, it can come off, but it's it's almost it's almost as if it's no, it's not a separate piece, but it it's so convincingly molded that it looks like it's a separate piece. And of, of course, it's it's a totally different color. It's a brand new sculpt. I've looked at the IG-88 figure for years, and I can tell you right now, this is not the same figure repainted. Beautiful figure, feels a little flimsy, a little weird at the hips. Doesn't seem like the legs are uh, centered properly, that if this robot was to actually start walking, he would fall over. But for the show itself, I mean, this looks exactly like the character. Let's arm him up. I'm so excited I'm dropping the pieces. He has those little IG-88 style claw hands. And there is the assassin droid and bounty hunter, IG-11, ready to go find the child. All right, guys, before we get to the star of the show, there is one more figure in the line that I don't have, and it's the Remnant Trooper. And he's called that because he's a remnant from the Empire, and there were still people that were loyal to the Empire and working independently uh, in the different ports around the galaxy. And as you know, if you've watched the series, that there were many uh, stormtroopers that were in this uh in this series. Uh, I don't have that figure because it only was released with a board game uh, and he came with the game, but it looked no different than an original Kenner Stormtrooper, only they went in and gave him a little bit of uh, battle wear, but that's okay. I got the star of the show right here. We got Mando, the Mandalorian himself. We have him right here and man, what an awesome figure. What an amazing figure. And you know, growing up, I always wanted the Boba Fett from the Star Wars Holiday Special because he had that really cool weapon. Settle down. <laughs> All they do is eat. And look, there it is. It's right here. That really awesome uh, blast. Uh, I don't know even know what you would call it. Like a like a like a shock blaster. This sort of thing right here. He has another weapon right here. He has a little side blaster. Is a beautiful. Uh, vinyl cape as well. I love that they've included this. We're going to open him up and take a look at the Mandalorian himself. I almost don't want to open this one because he goes so well with my vintage Boba Fett. Imagine I accidentally opened the vintage Boba Fett just while talking. All right. Bye-bye instructions. I don't know what the instructions would even be for. He looks so good. Like this just feels really like Christmas or being a kid and coming home on a Saturday afternoon with a new Star Wars figure and just that I don't have a sense of smell so there's no smell for me but that that feeling that that magic it's right there I mean that is so wild and you know there he is the Mandalorian and he's gonna go and and source the child and, and then bring him back for his bounty but we all know what actually happens look at that guys isn't that just great here let's see we can team him up we can go out these to me say Star Wars. These to me just reek of the magic of growing up and playing with the original Kenner figures. Uh, the figures that came later, Power of the Force in the 90s and all the different lines that came after, they were too perfect. 
they were too screen accurate. They were too overthought. The original line had a naiveness to them. And you know, in prior episodes, uh, I've spoken with Jim Swearingen who designed the original figures. And there's something to be said about looking at production stills and then designing based off of those um, rather than going into great detail over the smallest thing to make a, a screen or a movie accurate uh, version of a figure. These though, they still capture that naiveness even though they are screen accurate. Now, just to note that The Mandalorian is the very first live action Star Wars TV show. There were many animated series. There was, of course, uh, The Clone Wars, and there's, uh, going back to the 80s, there was Droids, there's Rebels. Uh, you know, there's so many different series. But this was the first live action uh, series, and they really did a good job of capturing not only the characters, but the likeness of the actors who performed these roles so wonderfully that they brought back a little bit of the Star Wars that I know to today. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what the second series brings and of course the figures that come along with them. It's Q&A time here on Toy Tantrum where I answer your inquiries about retro and current toys. All right, we got another question here from Martin, and he wants to know, what is the worst knockoff figure that you have that's so bad it's good? I know exactly what it is, and it's a toy that is a knockoff of Battle Cat, and it's this really cheap blow mold of Battle Cat. It's so flimsy. It even has little dents and dings that means that the plastic can't even maintain its shape. But what's super cheap is that it comes with these knockoffs of knockoffs of knockoffs. It's a three knockoff removed figure. It doesn't have any points of articulation. It's made out of rubber and you just basically stick it on the toys back and you're off to the races. This is really, really bad and so bad it's excellent. You stupid idiots. You brought me the wrong alien in an egg. Shazbat. Nanu nanu.